The basics of ice modeling are broken down into two areas. In the ice tree, we have the task for topology. Here are all the high-level compounds. And under the tools topology, here are all the low-level nodes. So let's just have a look at some of the principles involved. Uh, I'm going to select the bottle and create an ice tree. Now I'm going to go and grab set topology, inside of which is actually just self with dot topology, dot topology being the new uh, terminology for modeling. So I put that in there. I've actually told it not to do anything because it's just saying set topology. So I need to actually push something inside here. So I can go and get, say, uh, a subdivide locally here. Well, it doesn't look as though it's doing anything, but it actually is. Inside here, it's actually asking for a polygon index. So if I have a look down here, oh, there it is. If I move the index around, you can see it's subdividing a single polygon. Now, if I want to do the whole object, uh, I would have to go and get the index for the entire object. So I'll go and do a, a get data. And let's have a look inside the new attributes. So under the bottle, we have edge. The bottom, I'll jump, jump down and we can see vertex. And somewhere in the middle here is polygon. So I actually want the polygon index. This is the equivalent to doing something like the point position and that would give you, you know, a particle cloud, something like that. So polygon index and the uh, index I pump into here. So now it's doing the subdivision on the whole object. Now, because this is ice, well, yes, okay, it's okay for me to do something as basic as this, but the benefit is being able to uh, have the, the control, um, say, with an external object. So with this, I could go and put a condition in there. It's only subdivide on a condition. If I were going to grab an if node, drop that in. And now you can see I have that Boolean switch there. And I can go get, say, a greater than. If I move the null, I want to, I want to actually control it with a null. I can do the, the greater than. And what is it going to be greater than? Well, it's going to be greater than the position of the null, which is here in Y. I'll do, and uh, let's just drop it on there. And there we go. So with the movement of the null, There we go. When it goes higher than zero, it's going to subdivide. Otherwise, it's not going to do anything. Um, well, while I have this if node with a, with a true, I could probably do something else. So with the modeling operations, if you have to stack them up in a, in a hierarchy, um, uh, one on top of the other. But this way, we can actually build a number of operators in one graph. So if I go back to my topology here, I could say, well, I want to merge these two objects together. Uh, I can go merge topo side here and pop that in. And now it's going to ask me for what I want. And here's a quick way to do like the get topology. And I can just pick which one I want. So okay, I can say, well, I want the, the, the jar and put that in. And what else do I want? Well, if I get another get topology, uh, I'll say get one of the lids. I'll just pick the little fella. There we go and pop that in. And if I switch to wireframe, you probably can see it a little easier here. So it's saying from topo input or no transform. I'm just going to put inside here. So as the thing goes below, there we go. It's now adding and merging the topology of the lid to the bottle. So if I were to select, you can see it's now one object. Well, I actually want it the other way around so I can switch the conditions in the if node. So it's just showing a nice, nice little bit of uh, the control there. Well, as I move the, the null around, perhaps I could even use that to place my lid. And that's where things like the uh, topology here, if I use from topo input, that's actually going to keep it where the, the origin was, or the original lid in this case. And now I can actually use another object, and I actually want to use the null. So if I go and grab the null inside here and do the full name, as I move the null around, the merge takes place on the position of the null. But obviously if I go below, it's going to unmerge and use the subdivision instead. If I duplicate the null, I'm actually going to use this one as, a, as another control object. So uh, I'll go back and just pop the lid back down on, on here. And uh, I'm going to go and get a high level node now. If I go in here and search for uh, extrude, what have we got here? Uh, apply extrude along an axis. So if I add this now, uh, so here it's got me different ways for me to do an extrusion. 
Now this is slightly different from the, the normal sort of organic modeling tools you would expect. Uh, this one demands like a, an array or an integer. Um, so if I were to do say a string array, it says, well, what, what does that mean? Well, if I type in a number here, let's say 122, whatever. Okay, there we go. So that is like before with the subdivision, that's saying, if I go 122, 123, there we go. You can see I can now use an array, let's say 123 and 124, and now I've got the two items here. So that's one way of being specific about my extrusion, but as we've seen with the control objects, I can uh, I can use that using things say like an is element. And the is element you can see is uh, going down here is is element. I can use uh, a test. Now I took the polygon um, test polygon inside null. That was a test inside null looking for point position, and instead, just as we've seen using the point index, uh, sorry polygon index, you can also use the uh, polygon position. So I just changed that and resave this out as a new compound. And now if I uh, pop this into the is element, I need to go and grab that null and say uh, that's my control object. So now if I were to zoom in a bit in here, I'm actually going to just change this to say a rings, something like that. And inside here, so is element is now going to be my control object. And that's what that's what I want to use for my extrusion. So now anything inside that null is going to get extruded. And if I were to just perhaps reduce it slightly like that, there we go. You can now see I can control the object extrusion by the movement of my null. So I've just been showing you some of the low level nodes and one, one or two of the high level nodes. Uh, now this ice modeling really isn't about replacement of the current organic modeling tools. It's, it's about the control we have using multiple objects uh, or using a graph or changing the inputs um, on a large scale. So if I, let's have a look a, a bit about that. When I've been dealing on the bottle, I've actually, all of this set topologies, it's, it's rebuilding the topology each time. So things like the, you know, the index array is changing. So what it might be better to do is start to introduce some of the concepts of things like an empty mesh. And what that allows me to do is to do all the operations, the set topology on the empty mesh, and not actually change the original object. There is a, another shortcut I could do, and that's going here. I'm going to type in, so I've just added an operator to the empty mesh, and here I can just do clone polygon mesh. So if you want, you can always just say, well, actually, what I really want to do is take that and uh, have my own starting point, and you can use clone polygon mesh. Uh, I could also use uh, create multiple copies, um, and here I create copies from the polygon mesh instead of the clone. If I just pop that in there, again, the same one, I can use the, the original one here, uh, which is going to pin that one open. I don't need the uh, the clone, actually. I'm just going to use the copies for now. And it says, how many copies do you want? want multiple copies here. And here we can see the offset. I can just play around with the offset. This is uh, pretty interactive here. So I'm just using the uh, a numeric input here, but as you can see, we're using multiple control objects, and that's really where ice modeling comes into its own. If I were to go in and say grab, uh, instead of an empty polygon mesh, I could actually go and get the, the point cloud and bring an empty one of those in. Or I could go in and create a, a pre existing pattern. So here I can go and get, say, a grid. I can change the number of inputs, uh, maybe change the scale a bit. And in the same way that I've, I use nulls to use my control objects, I can use this this point cloud grid uh, and use this as my uh, template for uh, for the distribution. So now I can distribute the bottles here, change the the scaling and that, that sort of stuff. So however complex my uh, point cloud can be, I can use that as my distribution model. So starting from a very low level nodes, uh, building up to the high level nodes, uh, ice modeling is designed to, uh, to be able to give you the control changing the operators inside a graph, changing the inputs over time, or uh, using multiple uh, elements together to create more complex scenes.